what we're doing today is uh, beginning to pull some of the tops out. And they're pretty much scattered throughout the woods. You know, and I figure you saw a lot of those tops come down when I was doing those uh, Hudsel and 350 and other saw builds and did a bunch of the logging operations. And my oldest son's here and he's learning how to run a tractor and this is a great way to do it in uh, snaking that tractor through the trees and getting back and being real careful about what you pull and how you pull I can't think of a better way of training a person how to run a small tractor but getting right in it and getting stuff done so I'll take some snapshots of the day as it progresses he's up there now with a load unloading uh, cutting them down the size with that little 345 turned into a modded 350. Um, one of the saws that was in one of the videos. It's turned into a great little saw. The modification I made to the plastic intake boot, I checked it out this morning, seems like it's holding up just fine. And I had uh, helicoiled those muffler bolts and they're not coming out so far either. So it's been a successful build so far we got this top to go and got a lot of stuff down there to fish out of here kind of want to go to those next because they're down in the swamp and for whatever reason it's frozen right now well maybe 20 degrees and the wind has something to do with that and while the snow hasn't built up because we have none so far thank God and the ground's frozen this is a great time to fish some of those trees out of there see if we can do it with a small tractor, not the big one. Kind of learn to trust the tractor after a while. That little drop in the angle makes him a little nervous. Partly because he spent the last few days putting uh, round bales into the cow feeders and uh, everything was tippy then. Hey, when you're not used to tractors, when they get tipping up like that, it doesn't look like much from the ground, but when you're in the seat, it feels like it's about ready to come over, but it's not. He's got a long ways to go. And that tractor without a load in the bucket will slide before it tips. I know. How would I know things like that? We'll do a couple of smaller ones and he'll get used to it. That's good. All right, I'm going to pull the chain off and hook this one on. And uh, Ken, I'm going to go after this one and try to start fishing those out of there. All right. I'm going to take this mess as much as I can next. I didn't bring the tripod, but I got to run the saw and clear out some of that brush and get it to where I can pull them out. Like this long one right here. I'm going to have to break it into two parts. I think when it pulls that end around, it's going to jam up on that big tree over there. So I'm going to cut the end off. But, so I'll do it before, run the saw, and then we'll see it after. How's that? Save you the pain of listening to a chainsaw grind away at small wood. All right, there's the after. It's actually steeper than it looks. And while we get it while it's frozen, we can get a lot of the stuff out of here. See, he's getting used to it. Pull that one chain off and get it ready for the next tree. There you go. That's good. So it's that time of year again. Gotta lay out the chains and uh, get them on the big tractor. Yet again by myself. Got the one side on. One of the things you kind of 
learn how to do is uh, get them get jobs like this done with simple tools. How about that strap? Put it right through, right there. When I back up, I'm gonna pull that chain up and over the tire instead of me having to lift it, which is gonna make it a whole lot easier. <laughs> Fed the cows this morning. Got water. We got an ice storm coming in tonight, so I figured I'd better hook up the rig. It's certainly close enough. You know, now I just gotta start pulling things around a little bit. Things will fall right into place, just like that. Love these double ring chains. I found it sort of apropos that my uh, oldest son had me watch this movie, Big Cat. Uh, metaphorically, so much is true. So, straightened it out as best as I could. I'm roll back a little further and see if we can't get it to where those uh, clips will fit. One thing is I like to make sure that the smooth side is towards the tire. The open side is outside so it doesn't start eating holes in the tire because it will and I want the uh, have this side facing that direction so that when the tire is digging through it's trying to keep them closed versus trying to open them up little details see if I can do this one-handed. Look at that. Got to leave that hooked up until I get the other side. Probably going to have to roll back a little more. Again, this is a one-man show. One thing you don't want to do is even though it looks like it's easy access, you don't want to work underneath that tractor. Not if you can help a lot of iron coming the wrong way. It decides to roll. Well, an old fart like me is underneath. Well, got it to that point. So I guess this old cat has got some of this crap figured out. All I gotta do now is hook up that last piece. I got my chains on. And then we're gonna go uh, hook up the bulldozer because we're supposed to get a bunch of snow. I'd rather be prepared than not. Well, chains on. for snow. He's going to move that right out of the way so I can get this in out of the weather. We're supposed to get a storm tonight. So Truck number 28, one of the nicer trucks in the fleet. I'm going to be in truck 8 tonight.
think Ken's figured out the, the hay thing pretty well. Gotta feed the wood stove monster. Go through about one of those rows a month. So if that's December into January, that's February, March, April, May. Should be enough. So you got both the bales out? we have now winter wonderland we guys put the starter motor in the international tight quarters in there. And that's why we have a little tractor. It's the only one we could find that had both enough power to lift one of those bales, but small enough to get down those aisles. Look at that, he snaked it out in one operation. Barn's a great place to store some of this equipment. A few years back we built these stalls and every plank on these stalls is chainsaw milled. Every one. Did it with a 797 McCulloch. Birds are crapping all over them now. But, you know, that's what happens. They served us well for the horses. And the interesting thing is, uh, we had one horse that was a, a little bit of a cribber, and would have thought it would have destroyed these stalls, but it tried for about a year, and about as far as it got on that hard maple was, that. All it ended up with trying was bloody teeth. Now the horses get there too. make mechanic enjoyable. what he wanted to do on vacation coming from uh, the tropics effectively
over here is a 9 16 You can see my feet sliding. But basically what you have here is absolute sheer ice. So I'm going to wait for a couple of minutes. See if I can get the salt to work because if I start going down there and it hasn't worked, uh, you're going to hear about me on the news. This is probably as bad as I have ever seen it at the top of Shippy. It's a steep hill, so I just made it over the top. I was sideways and every which way but straight coming up. And uh, I'm kind of waiting to see whether or not the salt works fast enough that I can actually get down this hill. It looks like there's a stripe beginning to develop, so I guess I'm probably going to have to go for it. And I don't know if you can see in the camera, but this is just absolutely a skating rink. Ah, sucks. It's been a long day. Uh, put the camera away and see if I can get down this hill in one piece. This top here still hasn't even begun to melt. It's just really, really, it's about a half inch thick ice layer. Say that I'm comfortable about this? <laughs> no. It's the life of a snowplow guy. If I can get down this hill, I'm going to turn around and come right back up and uh, blast it so the guys in the morning don't have to deal with it.